Hello. Can everyone hear me? Thumbs up? OK, cool. Um, I'm really excited to give my talk today, but I have to warn you, this is my own, only my second time speaking, so I'm incredibly nervous. So I'm going to try to breathe. And I apologize <laughs> if my voice is shaky. It's just, this is terrifying. Um, but I am really excited to talk about uh, creating art with Raspberry Pi. This is about my adventures trying out and building with hardware for the first time. And if you don't know me, hi, I'm Stephanie. Um, I live here in Amsterdam. I'm a front-end JavaScript developer at Spronk. Um, it's a company in Utrecht with really friendly colleagues I work with. Um, I also co-organize a stupid hackathon in Amsterdam. So if you like hackathons, but you also don't like taking yourself seriously, I really recommend checking it out. We're going to have our second edition um, here in August is you conceptualize and we create products that have absolutely no value whatsoever and then you pitch them at the end of the day and it's a lot of fun. Um, so check that out. And I also mentor at Node School. Um, so if you're interested in learning JavaScript or you just want to hang out with cool people and eat pizza, um, check out Node School and feel free to reach out to me at my homepage or on Twitter at Stephanie Coates. So before I can start talking about my hardware project, I have to talk about where I was in my life six months ago when I decided to do a hardware project. So six months ago, I was going through a really rough time. Um, I had just left my first uh, developer job. Um, I'm a fairly new developer. I've only been coding for about two years. And I left that job, and I was newly unemployed. And it really hit, it took a hit to my confidence. Um, it was just really gone. I didn't feel good about myself. And I was getting really depressed and really reclusive in my apartment in Amsterdam. I didn't really like that. I didn't like what I was becoming. So I decided to do something out of the ordinary. And I decided to venture out of my apartment one, one evening. And then I ended up going to, the art, to an art museum. And I went to the Stedelijk Contemporary Art Museum here in Amsterdam. And I went to see uh, this artist in particular. Uh, there was an exhibit for Jean Tingley. He's a Swiss artist from the 60s and 70s. And for him, art was not about standing in a sterile white space and distantly um, gazing at a silent painting. For him, art was, supposed to, was meant to be playful. Um, he made uh, machines like this one um, that would actually produce art themselves. And he also made large um, and small installations um, that could be triggered by a viewer. And he was really interested in making inter art interactive with the viewer and therefore kind of blurring the line between who was the artist and who was the viewer. Was the artist the person that originally created the work or was it the viewer that was triggering and causing the art to go into motion? And when I was at the exhibit, I saw this quote and it really struck me. Um, it says, I wanted to create something ephemeral that would pass like a falling star. The work had to just transpire, make people dream and talk, and that would be it. Um, and for me, that just really stood out. I really liked this idea of art just being a temporary experience in the moment that connects an artist and a viewer. It's spontaneous. It can be different every single time. And it's only meant to bring joy and inspire people for a short time. That's it. Nothing else. So that quote and the whole exhibit with all these interactive art installations really inspired me. And I thought, you know, maybe I could build something like that. And at the time, uh, this was like a, real, like a ray of light in the really dark place that I was in. And it gave me a lot of hope and inspiration when I didn't have any. And I was just really inspired to come with something on my own. And of course, I dreamed really, really big. I wanted to make a huge, like this, a huge art installation in my tiny studio apartment in Amsterdam that would have moving parts and motors and lights and sounds. And since I'm a web dev, of course, I wanted the user to, and a user to interact with it with a web app and just spontaneously trigger things to happen in this art installation in my apartment. But um, I want to go ahead. I don't want to leave you in suspense. I didn't end up building that. I want to show you what I actually did build and then kind of walk through like how I, how I got here. So, and though I had those big dreams, you know, what I built was quite a bit different, but that's okay. So uh, here's uh, the app and the Raspberry Pi. And what I built was on the left, there's a React Native um, 
application of it, just a single page application with a color picker, and it has a grid of 64 squares, uh, and those represent each of one LED on the Raspberry Pi. And you can click out a design, and then the user can submit it, and then it's instantly sent to the Raspberry Pi in my apartment. So let me just play this. Yep, so it sends and it instantly shows up. Um, so yeah, this is quite a bit different than a huge wall installation. But, you know, that's OK. Um, that happens. That happens professionally. And like, you know, your projects don't end up how you think they will. But what was really important was just that I finished that first hardware project. And I gained a lot of confidence and skills doing that. And I've kept doing more hardware projects with increasing complexity because I just gained so much confidence from this first one. So next, I just kind of want to walk through like um, how I approached my project and how I ended up being successful in building this. So I broke my project up into two phases. Uh, planning, which actually uh, was a lot more work than the building part, uh, a lot more steps. And then the second part was building. So this is kind of my roadmap. Um, so after my really big idea of like the art installation, uh, my next step was to identify, well, what kind of skills would I probably need to build something like that? So I tried to identify what tech skills or experience that might be necessary to build an art installation. Um, since I wanted to be controlled by a web app, obviously I needed coding skills. Um, artistic ability probably would help out. Experience working with hardware. And definitely experience wiring, soldering, and just being comfortable with electronics. So next, I assessed myself against those list of skills I thought that I needed. So coding, I felt like I could probably handle the coding. Um, like I said, I'm a fairly newish coder, but I had worked for about two years as a Ruby on Rails developer. So I felt like I could probably handle that. Um, but this is when it kind of started going downhill, because uh, <laughs> I'm not a real artist. I had absolutely no experience with hardware. And this is what gave me the most anxiety of anything, was I had no experience wiring or soldering. Um, this was really scary. Um, it felt like the biggest obstacle. Like, how could I build anything cool with hardware when you can't wire and solder? Because I thought that was what it was all about, being able to wire and solder. So before I freaked out and gave up, um, I started Googling. And I really just wanted to find if maybe that I was missing something, because I hadn't really re researched hardware that much, if it was possible to build something artistic or interesting without having to know how to solder. And I really just needed to find like an off-the-shelf, plug-and-play option for making something cool. So I was very excited. There is a solution for this. It's called HATS. Uh, it stands for Hardware Attached on Top. Um, they're just these little boards, uh, accessories, that you can plug into the pins on top of a Raspberry Pi. No wiring, soldering. You can pop them in and out. Um, they're fantastic. And they also come with um, coding libraries with them. They're usually in Python because um, a lot of things for Raspberry Pi are coded in Python. Um, but they're packed full with documentation and example code so you can get up and running and um, get something working fairly quickly. And there are so many kinds of hats. You can do so many cool things. Um, there's ones for doing scrolling text or with LEDs. There's sensor boards that have just like 10 different kinds of sensors on them. Um, there's ones for making music. There's like the drum pad um, and a piano. And there's ones for doing um, audio manipulation. Um, but the one I chose is called the unicorn hat. I did like the name. Um, but it's just a 64 LED uh, square of LEDs. And the reason I chose this particular hat was because when I looked at it, I saw this canvas for making pixel art. I always really liked the aesthetic of pixel art. Um, so I thought it was cool. So I just kind of, and I like flashy lights. So that was really the reasons I chose this. Um, so at this point, I identified my hardware. So the next important step for me was I needed to um, think about what would the app look like? How would a user actually create a pixel art design to submit to my Raspberry Pi in my apartment? Um, so I created a mock-up, a very rudimentary mock-up. Um, so at the top, uh, I would have a color picker. So the, the user would visit this. It would just be a single, a single page application. 
Um, there would be a, a bar at the top. They could select colors. Uh, when they select a color, then they could click on square, and it would make, turn that square that color. And they could just click out uh, a design. And then once they were happy, they hit submit. And once they hit submit, it should instantly be sent to my Raspberry Pi and show up for just a few seconds on my Raspberry Pi. So after making the mock-up, I had a much clearer image in my head of the project kind of direction I was going. I was feeling a bit more self-confident. But um, the next step for me was uh, to decide what was really important. Were there any like must-haves that I felt I need to, to stay true to in my um, project? And then once I identified those, then I could move on to the next step, which was just deciding what all the tech I would be using to build everything. So must-haves, I had three things that were really important for me to include. The first was that anyone in the world could interact with the application. This was really important for me. I didn't want it to just be hosted on local server and people would have to be in my apartment to send me art. I wanted my friends in Amsterdam to send me art and I wanted my family back in the US to be able to send me art. Next thing, it had to, it had to be colorful. Like, People had to be able to select the colors they wanted to use and just really make the art worth their own by making it colorful. And then the last thing that was important for me is I wanted to build it with JavaScript and React. So like I said before, I had just left my first dev job and I was going to be looking for a new job and I was thinking of moving from um, Ruby on Rails to doing more like front-end JavaScript, React. Um, I had done some little projects with React, and I really liked it. Um, so I wanted to get better at those things, but I also thought it might be neat to um, use a framework for React for something with hardware, because it's a bit offbeat, and it might help me stand out because there's not... Um, I didn't think there was a lot of people building um, hardware things with um, React. So I was getting really excited because I was getting so close to building. Um, and my last step was just to assemble my toolkit. And that just means I was just going to bring together my vision, my must-haves, and I was going to finally identify the tech I would use for each piece. So there's really three parts to this whole project. Um, and they needed different tools. So the first part was where the user would actually create the art. Um, and that would be, be the mock-up um, with the single page application. This is where I would build it in React. Um, and I also was uh, interested in React Native. I had never used it, but I thought it was kind of neat that you could write JavaScript in, for Native. So I said, what the hell? Like, I'll make a um, React Native app as well. Uh, the second part would be all the hardware stuff. So it would be the Raspberry Pi, that unicorn hat, and um, this would be everything I needed to actually display the art in my apartment. So I decided to use Python since Unicorn Hat already came with a Python library and I could like build off of those examples and the code that's already there. I was a bit anxious about that because I've never actually written any Python, but um, if you can't tell, I'm kind of ambitious and I was hopeful that I could figure things out since I was a dev and there was documentation, there was examples, I figured I could like throw something together um, by using all those resources. So the third part, which is actually the most important part, was uh, how are they going to communicate? How is I going to get the art from that web app to actually show up on the Raspberry Pi? Um, so this was really important, and it was pretty frustrating and discouraging to not really know how I was going to do that, um, especially after I had done, like, all this planning and doing a bunch of research. Um, but if you're like a new dev, like just realize this is like, even professionally, this is like completely no normal. Like you're given a task and you don't always know how you're gonna solve the problem or what tools you're gonna use. Uh, and that's okay, you can just do more research. So that's exactly what I did, I did more research. Um, this time I looked at, okay, what other unicorn hat projects are out there? Um, and let me see what they're doing. Maybe they're doing something like me. So I looked at GitHub repos, I looked at blog posts, but unfortunately for me, they weren't really solving the same problem as I was, um, so that was kind of a dead end. So I was like, okay, 
let me look. Maybe there's some like cool projects where people actually use React to make something with a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's really hard to find examples. But I did do a lot of Googling and sleuthing on the internet, and I found one random lightning talk where someone was just kind of showing a proof of concept where they had built a UI with just a big button, and they had a single LED hooked to like a breadboard to a Raspberry Pi, and they could click the button, and it would light up the LED. Um, there was not much more information than that, but they did mention the technology they were using to send messages, and that was Socket.io. And I had never heard of Socket.io, so it gave me kind of a path to go down and research. And if you haven't heard of Socket.io, you are in for a treat because Socket.io is pretty freaking awesome, especially if you're doing hardware projects like mine. And it's awesome <laughs> because it enables real-time bi-directional communication between apps and it works on every platform, browser, and device. Um, this, the setup is really, I don't like, I shouldn't say easy, because I hate when people say, oh, it's easy, just do this, don't do that. Um, but it's pretty straightforward setup. You just need a Node.js uh, Socket.io server, and then you just, in each of your applications that you want to send messages from each other, you just include like their respective uh, client library. And, they had client libraries in Python and React, which was what I was using, so I was covered. So setting up, I'm just going to jump into a little bit of code, not too much. Um, I just want to show you how straightforward it really is to, like, if you're thinking about using Socket.io, if you're new, you want to do a hardware project, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, for the server, you just include the, the, uh, the Socket.io library. And um, then Socket.io works by adding event listers to an instance of a server. You can do just a node server. You could do Express. Um, there's a lot of different options, um, depending on how you want to build your server. Um, but uh, that um, it listens for connections. And then it can also, um, once it's connected, you can add other events. So like, for example, here, um, you can have an event. So like when art is submitted, it can then um, emit another message to the Pi um, when it gets that message. React, again, you just include, instead of just the Socket.io library, you include the Socket.io client library. You let it know where your server is located. And then, like, on um, here, like, an on submit message, an on submit button action, um, you can have it just um, emit a message and uh, with information about maybe, like, what LEDs you want to light up and what colors, and then that can be relayed to the Pi. And then on the Pi, this is Python. You just include the Python Socket.io client library. Let it know where the, it's kind of like, it's different languages, but the, the formula is the same. You just include the, the library, um, let it know where the server is located, and then you can have it listen um, for particular um, Socket.io messages to be emitted, and it can, like, when it, when it, when those are emitted, then it can like act on those in your application. Okay, that's all the code. Um, so with Socket.io, now in my toolkit, I finally had all three parts of my app figured out. And this is what kind of the final design of my project looked like. So I had, I built um, a Socket.io, oh, sorry, a React Native and a React uh, Client, um, clients where you could um, create the art, and then the art would be displayed on the Raspberry Pi with Python, and that would, I would include the Socket.io client libraries for both of those, and then in between those, um, hypothetically, there's a Socket.io server, and I just deployed that on Heroku, because Heroku's free, um, and it's easy, pretty easy with their tool belts to, um, to push things up to them. And then that server would allow those messages to communicate between the clients. OK. So that was a lot of planning. And that's kind of my experience with like software development, is like you do a lot of planning before you actually get to build cool stuff. Um, but I was finally ready to do the fun part for me, which is coding and building. But even with all this planning that I did, I was still super intimidated to start. Thinking about you know, the final end goal that I was going for is, is overwhelming. Um, but I found, and this is like a good quote I found to kind of match up um, with what I'm saying, is that uh, like if you break up tasks into smaller tasks, you can keep things really manageable and achievable. 
So uh, for the build, um, the project was really going to be three milestones for me. The first one was just to get one LED to turn on the hat, just from the UI to the hat. The next, after I got that successfully working, would be to turn on multiple LEDs, but just worry about one color. Don't worry about multiple colors yet. And then the final end goal was you know, creating the full pixel art in multiple colors. So even that first goal, I broke that down even further. So for example, I just made a big button in my UI. So when I clicked it, I would just see when I would monitor um, the log on the Raspberry Pi that it was just getting that message. So I just knew like the socket eye, just the communication was working. And once I got that working, I uh, kept the button. But when I clicked it, I just wanted to see one set LED light up. And then finally, I uh, got rid of the button, um, created the uh, 64 square grid, and then whenever I clicked on any of those and hit submit, I wanted to see that exact uh, pixel light up. And just by breaking up goals like this, it just made things really doable. I, I felt awesome most of the time because I stayed motivated and I had all these small victories um, that just made me felt like I was just like moving along. I felt really productive and I never really felt like overwhelmed because I just kind of kept myself distracted from thinking about like my end goal and just uh, focused on these little goals. So, done a lot of talking, and, but now, this is the demo part that's a little stressful, I hope it works. Um, I really want you to, hopefully, yep, it shows up there. Please visit light-art.herokuapp.com and please submit art that we can all enjoy and if you notice, my um, hopefully somebody will send more something quickly. <laughs> um, if you notice, my shirt's lighting up in sync with <laughs> the Raspberry Pi. Um, so remember the address because I'm about to go to the next slide. So light-art.herokuapp.com. So surprise. I made a bonus project for you. Um, so I have a Wi-Fi enabled blouse with LEDs in it that is in sync with uh, the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's just made with Arduino LEDs and oh, this is so awesome, it's working. Um, socket IO in my, in my shirt. So just with the project design I already had um, and using socket IO, I could just like, at another client, they have a Adreno C++ client for Socket IO, so I, I could use that. Um, so I used an Adreno in particular, the Feather Hizzo, because I needed um, Wi-Fi um, connectivity. I use uh, NeoPixel LED strips, and I use C++ because there was already a uh, client library for the NeoPixels, so I coded in C++. I am definitely not a C++ developer, but it works, and that's half the time that's all that matters. It just works. Um, and I, this was, I was adding on to my project that I already had, but I was also doing a lot of new things that I was not used to doing, so my, um, after I identified like these, um, the hardware and kind of like I knew I was going to use C++ and I kind of knew that everything, those pieces were going to fit together. The next step for me was to come up for a plan on like how I was actually going to construct this. And this was really important because I was going to be soldering and wiring for the first time. Um, and my plan was that, you know, I'd have um, the LEDs would be controlled by the Adreno and I have a lithium ion battery and then I wanted everything to be routed through an on off switch since I would be wearing it so it would be easy to turn on and off. Um, so I created a wiring diagram. I highly recommend checking out Fritzing. Um, it's a program that you, you can get all these parts as like part of libraries and if you're like starting out wiring, I def definitely recommend doing this before just so you can gather your thoughts and kind of visualize how it would all go together. And this was really helpful because once you start like cutting up wires and laying things out, it's really easy to get confused and like miss solder something, which is not the end of the world, but it, it happens. But by just having my, my wiring roadmap, it just helped me stay focused and keep on task and kind of know 
what I was supposed to be doing next. And I'm really excited because this was my first time really wiring and soldering, and I did it. It was my first big soldering project, and I conquered those fears of wiring and soldering. And you shouldn't be scared of soldering either. It's, it gets better, like, the more you do it, and it's also kind of like software, like, it, um, um, it gets better. You get better at the more you do it. But if it, like, at the end of the day, if it works, that's all that really matters. So these are just pictures, like while I was constructing it. Those are the LEDs. All, all this is like inside the shirt now. But you kind of give you a, a visual of like, kind of like, what's going on. <laughs> and again, um, with when I tackled this project, um, again breaking up goals really, really helped me. And by building that first hardware project with the Raspberry Pi and just using, this is so awesome, um, um, that Raspberry Pi was just the plug and play stuff, then I like gained the confidence that, hey, I can do hardware. And I got more used to using like um, connecting with the Raspberry Pi. And then also I got comfortable, like I felt like I could tackle Adrenos and soldering. And I wasn't in intimidated to try these. Um, more complex hardware projects, and I have tons more ideas of like things I want to build now because I just this is just makes me so happy like to see lights in my shirt. Um, so I'm almost at the end of my presentation. I just want to leave you kind of with some inspirational final thoughts. Um, so before this project, I had never written for hardware. I had never written any Python or React Native. I'd never built anything with Socket IO. I had never even built a little server with JavaScript before. And I had never combined so many tools and frameworks together in one project. But despite all those nevers, I think I managed to pull off a pretty cool first hardware project using a Pi. And if you were curious, I, I, I guess the surprise is already, I already said where I work. But I did end up finding a job. And it was, it was helpful to have kind of like a, a project that kind of I think it kind of helped me to stand out a little bit to get my job. So, you know, don't let the thing, what you think are your insufficiencies hold you back from tackling the stuff you really want to build. Like, you got this, you can do this. Just break it down, you can do it. So, thank you. I hope you are inspired to go create something wonderful. You can find this exact slide deck on my site. Please say hi on Twitter if you're in Amsterdam. Please come to No School, sign up for Stupid Hackathon. Thank you. I guess I can take questions. Um, also, like, you can ask questions, but also you can come, just I'll be hanging out at the No School booth afterwards. You can just talk to me one on one. I'm afraid I might freeze up during the questions, but we can try this. If anybody has questions. Okay. Thank you.